Okay, and three, two, there. Okay, I can't even do that anymore. Three, two, one. Hi guys, and welcome to this introductory video on the basics of audio and video. Um, this is really just a little video to give you a sense of what options are available to you if you're gonna have to capture yourself, whether it's for videos directly to students, whether it's for a video that would supplement and go along with a PowerPoint presentation, or even if it's for Zoom calls, team calls, whatever it is, if you've to capture video and audio, here are the basics in the options that are available to you. So let's start with the idea of recording directly to camera. So you have a few options available here. You can use a DSLR like the one I'm using here, which is kind of an expensive photo camera. Actually, let me record just a tiny bit so you can actually see. This is the camera that we're currently using. Um, other options you might have available to you are compact photo cameras that you have at home. A lot of these over the last couple of years have really pretty damn impressive video capabilities. Um, so definitely worth investigating those. You may have like a home camcorder. Get that into focus there somewhere. Come on camera, you can do it. There you go. Or you may have perhaps even access to something like a, a GoPro or any other action cams like that. These are basically just used for recording kind of sporting events and everything, but they're, they're a great alternative. And of course, last but not least, one thing that we nearly all have access to, which is our mobile phones. Now, mobile phones in the last five years have come on leaps and bounds as far as video quality goes. So this is a great possibility for you guys. Uh, I'll make dedicated videos on working with all of these for it, but just at the moment, bear it in mind and phone is probably the cheapest. I mentioned the other ones though, just in case you have access to them already, maybe it's part of the school, maybe it's personal stuff you have, or maybe you know someone who'd be able to lend you one. They're all possibilities. Oh, just a sip of coffee to keep going, already tired. Okay, so the pros and cons of recording directly to a camera. Well, the pro is recording directly on the cameras, you're probably gonna get the highest quality image you can, which is great. And of course, it's easier to move around, whether it's on a tripod or whatever you're resting it on. Cameras are small, maneuverable. You can kind of set yourself up anywhere in your house. Now, the negative side of that is that, well, firstly, you're gonna to have to download that footage afterwards and get it onto your computer, uh, which takes a bit of time. If you're lucky, some laptops have like an SD card reader. Do I have a sample? There you go. So it's kind of your SD you'd find in cameras. There's also micro SD, which is even smaller than that. Um, but you're gonna to need to get that on your computer. So you can either click that into your laptop if it has an adapter or you'll need a card reader, which will look a little bit like this slightly broken one that I have here. One of the negatives of using a camera to record yourself though is quite often the microphones in them aren't great. So if actually using this camera at the moment we're recording on, which cost over two and a half grand, you can, if I switch now to the microphone, you can hear exactly what it sounds like, what the camera is recording. I'm recording myself separately with a different microphone, which I'll talk about later. Um, but that's what it sounds like. So while the image looks lovely, the audio is kind of thin, it's kind of dry. It's, it's not great. Um, and again, particularly in this online world, you really want to make sure that people can hear you easily. If they can't see you, you know, it's not great. It's harder to make a connection with, but really, being able to hear someone is the most important, especially because you're sharing information. So basically, if you just record yourself with your camera, with no other devices, it's gonna sound something like this. And so now I'm just gonna switch back to the Elgato Wave 3, which is my microphone I'm using here. I'm just gonna hold it up there, you can see it. It's a little USB microphone. We'll have a separate video on that soon. I love this microphone, but for now, it's just a little teaser. Of course, depending how you record as well, if you wanna make edits and everything like that, and you may need editing software on your computer, it's just worth bearing in mind that all these things add a bit of additional time, even just transferring over the files. If you're recording in something like 4K, it can take 10 or 20 minutes to just transfer over those files, let alone upload them. Now, if you're used to recording like this, this is how you've done it before and you're comfortable with it, then I think this is a great solution. I love recording directly onto cameras. I love the quality I get. I like the control it offers me. But I think for a lot of people, 
building a setup that's connected directly to your computer is probably going to be the easiest and most satisfying option for, for teaching, particularly because of limited time. You just want to be able to sit down, record your work without having to think about it too much, and you definitely don't want to be adding more workload on top of it. So if you're going to be using a camera like this, just bear in mind you are probably going to want to get some sort of an external microphone that plugs directly into that camera to get better audio. I'll go through some of those options again in an upcoming video, but just bear in mind if you're going to go directly with a camera like this, you're probably going to have to buy an extra little bit of kit if you don't already have it just to make sure you sound as good as you look. So what are the pros of recording directly onto your computer? Well, the first one is obvious. It, it records directly onto your computer. So there's no transfer times. Your files are going to be sitting there ready to go. If you're recording directly in something like Panopto or any other lecture capture thing, it will probably upload directly from there and you won't even have to consciously go in and choose your file and do it. So definitely easier in that regard. Another nice thing is you can get an external microphone like the Wave 3 that I'm using here. You can plug that into your computer and you can use that as your audio source. So even if the camera you're using doesn't have the best microphone, you can just use a different one and they will automatically sync there and then. Another big plus of recording directly onto your computer is that your, your new setup will obviously be great for recording videos or any conversations you want to have with your students, but at the same time, you will have a new setup that you can use when you're recording, say, whether it's a PowerPoint presentation, but also when you're doing Zoom meetings, team meetings, if you're using things like Collaborate Ultra, you're going to have that camera set up. It's going to look nice. You're going to have yourself lit, good sound. And so all that additional work you're putting into prepping now will spill into all those other applications as well it basically will bump up the quality of those things. And these things do matter. Okay, but what are the cons? Uh, and of course, there are cons. There are cons and pros with everything that we're going to discuss over the next couple of weeks. One of the major cons is that if you're using a desktop like I am instead of a laptop, is you are going to be pinned down to wherever that desk is set up. And as you can see here, it's my bedroom, uh, and so I am stuck with the light and background that the desk affords, and there's not a huge amount I can do it. I could turn the camera face the other way and, and show you our, our somewhat clean en suite, but I, I thought I'd save you that. We'll put that in an additional video. But it's just something to bear in mind that you don't have the same freedom. If you have a laptop now, it's a bit more flexible, of course, because if you can set yourself up near a window with a nice light source, you know, a quieter room with less echo, you can get much better quality recordings. But definitely if you're on a desktop or if you've just got your one home office solution because you've got kids running around the other room, animals, noisy fridges in kitchens, traffic outside, you're going to have to just work with what you have. And, and I would just say, if that's the case, embrace it. You can just do the best you can with what you have. None of this is ideal. But in reality, as long as there's nothing too crazy, it's fine. Now, even if you're recording directly onto your computer, you will need software to record yourself. For people using things like Panopto for lecture capture, it can record the video directly there and then for you. But if you want to make a standalone video where you're discussing, you will need something just to capture yourself speaking. Now, the good news is there are free options for that, and I'll walk you through them. At the moment, actually, I'm recording myself on a thing called OBS, which is free software that, believe it or not, gamers use to record themselves and stream it across the internet when they're playing games. But with a little bit of tweaking, it does a great job. Uh, and again, there will be a video showing you how to use that, but I'm just putting it out there to say that while yes, you will still need to get a little bit of software or not, it doesn't mean you have to spend more money and you can still get great results. Like right here now, this is the OBS recording as opposed to the camera recording. So if I switch back to the camera and switch back to OBS, that's the difference when you set things up properly. So it, it, it's a great option. So if you go down this recording yourself directly on the computer route, what are your options? Now, most people are going to go with the most obvious one, which is the webcam. Uh, if you have a laptop or a lot of desktops in recent years, particularly Macs, webcams are already built in. If not, you'll have something external like this guy here. There you go. It's the beautiful Logitech C720, I think. I hate this. But anyway, 
it does the job. Now, webcams are great in a way because they plug straight into a USB port usually. Your computer recognizes them straight away. Pretty much every application on your computer will see them. So they're definitely handy if they're built into your machine. Obviously, it's even easier when you open something like FaceTime or Panopto or Collaborate Ultra. It will recognize it straight away. So that's great. The problem is webcams, they've, they've been really very poor for a lot of years. You'll notice it yourself. The image just doesn't look as nice or good. The field of view is very tight. It's just quite cramped. It's, it's a, you're very stuck in a close-up. And for me, if you're someone who is quite expressive like I am, you lose a huge amount of that connection with someone by watching them without getting to see some of that movement, seeing some of their passion or their energy for what they're talking about. Now, I know what you're thinking. What a lot of people do, they say, of course, the webcam's a little bit close up, but I'll just go further back. And so you'll see more of me. And that's true. Uh, but there's a big problem there is the further you move back, the further you are away from the microphone. And this has a big effect on the quality of the audio you're hearing. Like the microphones and webcams are already not great. They're designed to be functional. Uh, and you may think functional is just fine, but I would use it as the same logic as, you know, having bread and water for dinner is just fine. I'm just saying perhaps it's not what you'd serve on your table if you're having guests coming over. So even with a great microphone like the one I'm using here, if I move back, you can already hear the difference in the sound. And that's only me only moving back this far. But just the further you are away from the microphone, the further you are going to be from getting the optimum sound on it. And really, webcams are, are, are devils for this because when you're a bit far away and your, your audio is a little low, what they do is they raise all the levels to try and capture you as best they can. But what that does is it brings in a lot of the sound of the room. Like you can see, if I move back here, you can probably hear a good bit more of the room. It's a bit of an echo and everything like that. Uh, and on cheaper webcams or cheaper microphones, what you'll get there as well is you will start getting hiss. And hiss is something you really want to try and avoid as much as possible because, uh, trust me, your students will thank you. There's nothing worse than having to listen to something for even five or 10 minutes, but particularly if it's a lecture of 30, 40, 50 minutes with that kind of in the background, it, it, it just makes it very hard to focus. It, it strains the ears. I'm not saying webcams can't work. I'm just saying that if you're going to work with them, you just need to be aware of their limitations and be able to tailor your expectations to work with that, to get the very best out of it. So what if you were able to combine some of those great camera options we talked at the beginning with your computer to really blend the better quality of the cameras, but the handiness of recording directly to your computer. And what the great news is you can, uh, by using something called a capture card, which looks a little bit like uh, this guy here. There you go. Uh, this is just a generic one, but at the moment I'm using something called a cam link. Now, if you wanna know more about capture cards, just watch the video that's linked here. It'll give you all the information you need to to be able to buy one, to use one. But for now, let's just say that with this little connector and a basic cable, most, not all, but a decent amount of cameras can connect directly to your computer and work as a webcam alternative. Uh, now, I love this option because it means I have the handiness of the computer, but with a better quality image. And the pros, I think, are pretty obvious here. Um, if it's the camera itself, it's a little bit easier to move because particularly if your webcam is built into your monitor or your laptop screen. Uh, your laptop's usually on the desk, so it's quite low, so it's kind of looking up your nose, which isn't the most flattering image for any of us. And if you've got a camera, you probably have to have it on a tripod or, or balanced on some books. It's just that bit easier to be able to turn it a little bit to the left and right, move it a little bit further back. Definitely, that's a big pro. Uh, obviously, the image is going to look nicer. Even if it's a lower resolution, I think it's going to be nicer because you're probably going to see more like this. You're going to get more of a sense of the person. And really, that's what's important. It's it's just a lot more engaging than in a tight close-up. And lastly, and kind of most obviously, it, it just looks more professional. You know, you will look more professional. Your work will appear better. Um, Every option has its pros and cons. Easiest, obviously, is a webcam solution with, I guess, maybe some sort of a headset to improve the audio. I'm not a big fan of, of seeing them on people's heads, but they, they will get you better audio and you can be a bit further away from the webcam. So definitely a possibility and we will test that out. At the end of the day, it's really down to you. What do you want your 
work to look like? What is most important to you? And also importantly is what's available to you. Some people may value the improved image quality uh, while others simply don't have the time or interest. And, and there's room here for, for all of those options because none of them are wrong. It's personal taste. The one thing I will say though, is that while the online learning world does have a lot of positives, it does break the intimate connection between teacher and student. And our best way to kind of manage that and minimize that really is through improving the, the connection they have with us, which will be true video and audio. So if you can, I think it's worth getting yourself set up right or as right as possible. You are gonna put the same level of effort into your videos, lecture delivery, online tutorials, whatever it is. So considering that you're gonna put all that time and effort in over the next coming academic year, why not make sure that you're captured as well as possible? And some of this work then can hopefully be reused afterwards as well. So you're putting the effort in now, get it as well as you can. Okay guys, that's me done for today. Uh, I know that's a lot of information. I know some of this earlier stuff is gonna be a bit jammed with, with different notions, but what I'm really trying to do is just make sure that everyone is, is up to speed on the basic concepts of what's available to them. If there's anything I forgot or that you've got questions about, just throw it into the comments below or send me a personal message. We'll try and answer everything we can because I realize that everyone's gonna be figuring out their own solution and inevitably different computers, different gear is gonna throw up questions. So if we can help, we're here to help. As I've said earlier, I'll be making specific videos for all these options, hopefully making a separate video on recording using a, a GoPro, using a webcam, using a DSLR like this. And then when I'm finished with all of those, I'll make a comparison video so you can actually see all those different options side by side and you can decide for yourself what is, well, firstly, obviously affordable, but secondly, what you prefer and you think is most achievable for, for you with your time limitations. It's all about finding what best fits your needs. As always, guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. There'll be a new podcast out at the end of this week. You can either watch it on here or if you prefer to have it on the go, go onto iTunes, subscribe, and you'll be able to download all our podcasts there and listen to them wherever you want. Thanks, guys.